This is Archon. I loved this game. It's hard to believe that it was actually 1983, but there it is on my screen. 1983 was when Archon came out. It was a terrific game, you know, and it's funny because I've heard a lot uh, of uh, info from uh, some of the people who developed this game back in the day. Electronic Arts uh, was the distributor, but it was uh, Freefall that actually produced this game, or developed this game, rather. And it was just the three of them that uh, the names that were listed uh, they are on the, the front, uh, or the, the opening screen. Uh, John Freeman being one of them, I heard in an interview on one of the uh, Atari 8-Bit podcasts. Uh, very interesting guy. Um, interesting background. He kind of broke off from Epix and did his own thing. And uh, one of the things, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate in this particular video, uh, that's interesting about Archon is that it included the ability to play with zero players. So it would play both sides by itself. And that made for a sort of an interesting demonstration that you can put in the, you know, storefront windows of computer stores. So I am not playing this game right now. This game is being played by itself. The computer is playing both teams. So we're about to see some combat here. This is the unicorn versus the... I can't remember what that guy is. Jeez, it's been too long. Ballisk, I think? But I think they're pretty evenly matched. The only thing is, because we are on a light playing field... The unicorn, being the light player, has the advantage. And that was one of the things about Archon, was if you wanted an advantage, you made sure to attack opponents that were on the opposite of what you were. So if you were dark, you would want to attack your opponents if they were on a dark square. Or if you were light, you would want to attack opponents that were on a light square. This is the shapeshifter. The phoenix, of course, is native to the light side but the uh, shapeshifter can make himself look like the opponent that he's fighting, and of course he gets all the abilities as well. When you, as the phoenix, when you actually kind of blow up like that, you're invincible to attack. And that makes some of these fights, like uh, with the phoenix on phoenix, kind of lengthy, because they can both sort of flame up at the same time and then be protected. So this could go for a while. But this is a real fight. This is a real fight, as, as in the computer is actually leveraging artificial intelligence, but on both sides, and, and independently in different threads trying to beat the other. It's really interesting the way that this worked out. It's, it's a really great game, but one of the things that's fascinating is that the computer has the ability to play itself, and it plays competitively. It is truly trying to beat itself. So that took a long time. The shapeshifter is weak now, so he's going to try to take advantage of that, and, and it didn't, didn't work out to his advantage. Anyway, there's a number of ways to actually beat this game. You'll see these uh, points here on the on the actual playing field, and I gotta I gotta wait until they actually duke it out before I before I can explain it to you. The shapeshifter is on the. Uh, yeah, he's got the advantage. These guys are going to keep losing if they go after him. So you've got the points here. You've got the uh, points uh, at the very top and middle of the screen. Those are power. Those are I think called power points. If you can get all of your guys on each one of those points, then you instantly win the game. The other way to win the game, of course, is to just beat everybody's guys. If you beat all of your opponents, uh, opponents, and only your men are left standing, then you beat the game. So it's like uh, chess in that regard. If you're down to two players, and you beat the, the final player, then you win. It is unlike chess in that you don't just win by moving on top of your opponent. Opponent, You have to go into that battlefield, and you have to win. So with the wizard, of course, you just saw the wizard cast a spell that imprisoned that player. As time moves on, you'll notice that the screen, become the, the, the checkered field here, Gets, uh, it goes from light to dark, so you've got more light spaces than dark. Now the sorcerer just changed, shifted time to return the advantage of the field back to, to him. Shapeshifter is on a tear at the moment. Shapeshifter is destroying his opponents. So you'll notice that it starts to kind of get lighter now. It's a the playing field is getting lighter, and that means that the advantage is slowly going back to the light team. Is the shapeshifter about to end his reign? He is. The shapeshifter is done.
Sorcerer, Sorcerer is going to bring the Shapeshifter back. Dragon is uh, a very powerful. You'll see he's got a lot of health. He's got a he's got a hard hit. One hit and that guy's done. That guy's toast. Oh my. That is a very poor showing by the dragon. The dragon used to be my secret weapon. Not terribly fast, but uh, his, he's got a hard hit. You take a lot of damage when you get hit by that dragon. Shapeshifter is coming back into action. Shapeshifter is tearing it up again. It's funny, you get into that uh, battlefield and you've got those bumpers and sometimes that you, you can kind of walk through them, other times they're just uh, rock solid and you can't get through them. So the wizard has uh, summoned an elemental to come after the uh, shapeshifter. The shapeshifter is definitely pretty weak at this point. <laughs> All right, they killed each other. All right, so the advantage is going back to the light side. You'll notice that the screen is now mostly light. Now you'll see the dark guy is moving all of his guys to these dark pieces. Now the yellow team is trying to move to the to the to the key points on the on the on the game board. Unicorn is going for the gold here. They both fire pretty quickly, but the sorceress has an advantage being on the dark spot here. More more strength, more power. That unicorn is fast, though. I think that sorceress just took one. Oh my, look at that. That's a, just a terrible... That's a terrible thing to happen when you're playing this game. Now you lose all kinds, you lose that position there, of course, and you lose all kinds of extra power. Ballast is going to come in and see if he can retake that space. These two are pretty evenly matched, but of course so is the Sorceress, so we'll see how this goes. Oh my goodness, not looking good for the dark side. This should be interesting. It's not looking good for that phoenix. We're all mourning the phoenix right now. This could be the win. Let's see. He's got the speed advantage. But that blue guy, if he hits you, it's over. Oh. Oh my. That is the game. The game is ended. It's a really cool game. It's really definitely a lot of fun to play with two players. You can do uh, uh, versus. You can, you know, you've got uh, player one joystick, player two joystick, play with a friend. It's a really fun game, very competitive. Uh, but when we were kids, man, we used to fight over this game. It was really frustrating at times, but a really, really great game and one that was produced by John Freeman and um, uh, two of his partners who formed the game uh, Free Fall. Uh, after they broke away from Epix, they weren't too happy with Epix and the way things were going there. They formed their own company and made this game. They made a sequel, but uh, uh, not much beyond the Archon games. They did do other games, but not too much as far as uh, you know, well-known and uh, hugely successful games like, like Archon and the Archon sequel. Anyway, that's going to conclude it. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see all of you in the next one.